We got breaking news on a Monday morning. According to our friends at 24-7 Sports, Ohio State quarterback Kyle McCord is set to enter the transfer portal. Mm -hmm, that's a new thing to do. The former five-star recruit coming off his loan season as a starter there. Of course, after C.J. Stroud went to play on Sundays, passed for just over 3,100 yards and 24 touchdowns. He led Ohio State to an 11-0 start, of course, before that first loss that we saw against Michigan not too long ago. But with McCord gone, of course, Ryan Day might have to tip his toe into that portal. But here he is over the weekend talking about McCord maybe over the future at that QB spot. Um, I just I think that that's that's kind of a long way away right now. Um, you know, we're going to get back to work here. Um, you know, we'll probably have a, we had a practice last week. We'll have a practice coming up this weekend and the guys will get out there and compete and, and grind and um, and we'll take it from there. Uh, you know, I can't sit here and tell you I know for sure about any of those things right now, but um, everyone's going to have an opportunity to compete and you know get after it during bowl practice, and and then when it's time to go play in the game, we'll figure out you know who who should get the reps and and go from there. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't really have a great answer for that just yet. Well, Kyle answering the questions for him already, so we don't have to wait for that. Of course, taking a look at the numbers, look, a lot of people wants to throw shade at Kyle McCord taking over, but his number speaks volumes in the Big Ten, top five in pretty much every category, second in passing yards, and had 24 touchdowns, as I mentioned there, and Fisher C, 161. Not a bad debut for him this season. I mentioned, of course, 11-0 start outside of that loss to Michigan not too long ago. All right, I want to get to our insider when it comes to everything Ohio State. My guy, Dave Biddle, I guarantee you to think you'd be this busy when it comes to a QB situation there in Columbus. Your reaction to this surprise? Definitely surprised. Did not expect to wake up to this news this morning, Brandon. Um, I will say not completely shocked because of the comments that you just played from Ryan Day yesterday. I mean, it'd been very, th those were striking comments. It'd been very easy for Coach Day, even if he was having some doubts, to say, well, you know, Kyle's 11 and 1, bring up some of the stats, you know, he's our guy. And then, you know, basically give the coach speak that coaches always give to the media. He didn't do that, as we just saw. And, you know, I was thinking when I heard those comments yesterday, I'm thinking, man, he's strongly considering making a change next season. I did not think that this would happen before the bowl game. Um, you can see that Coach Day was frustrated with Kyle McCord throughout the season. It wasn't just the Michigan game. I mean, they were trailing against Rutgers at halftime. Um, really, the Notre Dame game should have ended on an interception. Notre Dame dropped an interception on that last drive. And that was kind of McCord's claim to fame was that Notre Dame drive. So he was erratic throughout the year, despite having uh, the best wide receiver, in my opinion, in college football, and Marvin Harrison. You know, and he had his good moments, too. The arm talent is there with Kyle McCord. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, accuracy leaves a lot to be desired. He predetermines where he's going to throw the ball quite often. And the Michigan game was the final straw. He looked like a deer in the headlights against Michigan uh, and did some things in that game that you cannot do. He wasn't the only reason they lost the Michigan game. But uh, I think that was the final straw for Ryan Day. And I think they had a tough conversation. Perhaps they had that conversation yesterday morning right before uh, Ryan Day met with the media. That's the way it seemed to me when I was, uh, now that I know that McCord's leaving, looking back on the press conference yesterday, I bet you McCord and Ryan Day had a meeting yesterday. Some growing pains there between the two sides that you mentioned. Of course, look now, you look at that spot, it's open. They do have two options on the roster, but Day has shown in his past he likes to have four quarterbacks. If you're thinking about guys that have excelled in the system, Justin Fields, C.J. Stroud, if you're thinking about a guy maybe that has some years under his belt, what options are out there now that the portal is opening this morning? There's a lot of rumors out there. I have not heard from any of my sources anything concrete, but, you know, I've heard, you know, right, Riley Leonard could be an option, Cam Ward, guys like that. I, I think it's, they're going to land someone in the transfer portal. I don't know who, but I think the profile will be something like a one-year guy. that they, I, they believe in some of their young guys. They're in-house guys, Devin Brown, true freshman Lincoln Keenholz, who can play in the bowl game and still redshirt because he's only played in two games this year. And they have a big time prospect, Aaron Nolan, coming in, who's going to enroll in January. I think they like those guys. But I also, especially now that we know McCord's leaving, that tells me Ryan Day likely has somebody lined up. That's just my guess. Ryan Day has somebody in the portal lined up that's going to come in who's a veteran quarterback and is going to be the quarterback for one year. Maybe two, but probably a guy that has one year left. And then they'll turn to either Devin Brown, Lincoln Keenholz, 
or Air Nolan. It also makes the bowl game with Missouri a lot more fascinating because now uh, it's going to be Devin Brown and Lincoln Keynotes. It's going to be those guys, maybe just one of them, maybe both of them. So the whole thing is intriguing. But yeah, I, I will be shocked if Ohio State does not land a quarterback in the transfer portal now that McCord is leaving. I'm curious. I want to jump back on that Riley Leonard train and, and Cam Ward. Those are options out there, but are they really the best option? Because remember, they do have that number one receiver coming from our neck of the woods in Florida to Ohio State that's committed. If you're telling him, hey, this may be one of your options there, is this a realistic deal that this is your option in the future? And I think that's a great point with Jeremiah Smith. I think you have to be, you know, have the lines of communication completely open, Brandon, and tell him this is our plan. What do you think? And my, people might say, what are you talking? You're going to talk to a 17 year, year old kid about your plans. <laughs> yes, you are. When he's the number one wide receiver in the country, you bet you are. And when he, he needs to know who's, who's going to be throwing him the ball, both his true freshman year and down the line. This is our plan is what you got to tell him. In my opinion, I'm sure they are. This is our plan for next year. This is our plan for your sophomore year. Doesn't mean it's definitely going to work out that way, but we see perhaps a quarterback coming in this year that you're, that's going to be throwing you the ball. And then your sophomore year, maybe it'll be Aaron Nolan, but they have to make sure they're communicating with Jeremiah Smith and, and that he's on board with what they're doing or they'll lose him. You see the numbers there, of course, the he definitely will be an option for them moving forward there. So he just needs to know who's going to throw him the, a ball in the future there for the Buckeyes. I want to go to the bowl game, and Dave, I'm not going to put you in a spot who will be there. Um, well, actually, you know what? I am. Who, who's going to be attended there? Because we just don't know now that you see a lot of guys, you know, planning to move on in the transfer portal. But who's going to be in attendance for this bowl game? Yeah, it's going to be wild, Brandon. You know, I, I, I'm sure Marvin Harrison Jr. won't play. And frankly, if I was advising him, I would tell him not to play. He has nothing to gain. Um, if it was a CFP game, he would play. It's not. So Marvin won't play. I imagine Emeka Buka won't play, um, although he, maybe he will. Travion Henderson, because he's a running back, I could see him saying, I'm going to save myself. Um, I could see JT Tuimolo Al not playing. I could see Denzel Burke not playing. So the Buckeyes are definitely going to be depleted. They're going to be breaking in a new quarterback or quarterbacks, and they're going to be with a lot of their stars. It's going to be similar to the Rose Bowl a couple years ago when Marvin had his coming out party. The only reason he played a big role in that game is because Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson sat out the Rose Bowl against Utah. So <laughs> it's going to be similar to that. You're going to have definitely multiple star players for Ohio State sit out this game. How important is this quarterback for Ryan Day? Because we do know now you have three losses against Michigan, and the leash has maybe gotten a little short of the past couple of games here. You know, how important is for Day and his job and his security into the future? Yeah, Brandon, I've said, I said coming into the Michigan game, his job was not on the line just because if they go 11 and 1, especially if it's a close game, it ended up being a close game, uh, his job's not on the line. If he goes, you know, loses four straight to Michigan, including a Michigan team that's going to be losing a lot of players and it's at Ohio Stadium next year, then his job's on the line. Uh, and I think Ryan Day knows that. So it's it's paramount that he finds a quarterback that can take him to where he wants to go, that can beat Michigan, that can win the Big Ten, and it's going to be tougher to win the Big Ten next year, obviously, with the four new teams coming in. They're all legit teams, Washington, Oregon, USC, UCLA. So um, if we're sitting here next year and he's lost four straight to uh, – Michigan, his job will be on the line, but uh, I think he's going to figure out a way to get it done this coming year, this next year. All right, Dave, I uh, guarantee you, you're probably on one hour of 12 hours straight now. Welcome to the transfer portal now with Ohio State. Joey, get to the picture. Appreciate all the context there. Hey, don't forget, it's a big day, transfer portal palooza. We got you on tap here, 24 7 sports here on HQ. Oh boy, starting at 10 a.m., you can catch it right here on HQ. Also on YouTube, all the moves here. Remember, Kyle McCord is now in the picture in that portal, along with other guys from the Power Five and the G5 as well. You want to tap in right here on HQ.